Hello. My name is Mohammed Javari, and today I will binge solve the Purple Comet math meet of April 2020. And the rule is that I won't pause the video and I will just think out loud while I'm solving these problems. I haven't seen these problems before. This is a high school contest, and um, that by no mean means that I can I can solve these easily. But let's see. I'll solve the first ten problems and probably make another video solving the next 10 and then another solving the last 10. That's assuming that I can solve all of these. So problem one, find A so that the ratio of three and two third to 22 is the same as the ratio of seven and five sixth to eight. So A is an unknown. We wanna find A so that the ratio of three and two third to a uh, to 22 so divided by 22 is the same as the ratio of 7 and 5 6 to 8 okay so it looks like very simple arithmetics problem what do we do well i would prefer to maybe first uh write this mixed uh, number as a fraction so 3 times 3 9 plus 2 11 11 third so this number is simply 11 third divided by 22 equals seven and five sixth also I can write seven times six is 42 plus five is 47 divided by eight. And at this point I could uh, cross multiply, maybe I'm tempted to cancel the 11 and 20 to simplify the world. So that's one, that's two, that's one third over two, that's one over six. So that thing is just one over six. The sixes cancel, so I get A equals 47. Oh, one thing about the purple comet uh, meat is that all the answers, all of the answers are integers. So that could a little bit help me so that I do not worry about maybe making um, some arithmetics problems here. All right, so A equals 47. So that's our answer to problem number one. Take note of that. Later, we're going to check our answers. But problem one, the answer is 47. OK, let's go on to problem number two. An ant, oh, this is geometry problem, OK. So this. Is a drawing. So an end starts at vertex A in equilateral triangle ABC. So here is A, B, C. A, B, C. We have an end starting at this vertex and walks around the perimeter of the triangle from A to B and to C and back to A. So it goes around the perimeter of the triangle. When the end is 42% of its way, around the triangle, it stops for a rest. 42%, well, that's 30, almost a third, 33%. So 42% would be somewhere, uh, let's say just here, it doesn't matter. So here we have, that's kind of 50%. Um, let's say here. This is where the end rests Uh, that point is called D. Find the percent of the way from B to C. The end is at that point. Uh, wait. Find the percent of the way from B to C. So what percent of the way from B to C this end has stopped? Okay, so it's just a playing with percentages here. So we have we have uh, 42%, okay, so that's 42% of the entire perimeter. Um, so that's 42 over 100. That would be all the way from A to B and to D. That's 42% of the perimeter. Um, well, how about I call, the, I call each side length uh, well, let's call the side length one unit. I think that will simplify a little bit. So if you call the side length one unit, 
then the parameter is three and 42% of that would be 42 over 100 times three. So the length of ABD then is 42 over 100 times three. I wanna take away one because the entire AB side is one. So take away one, let's simplify this now. Three times two, six, three times four, 12 over 100 minus one, which is 100 over 100. This turns out to be 26 over 100. 26 over 100, so the percentage would be 26. So that's our answer to problem number two, 26. Okay, now problem number three. Find the number of perfect squares that divide 20 by 20. Okay, 20 by 20 perfect squares, they divide it. So 20, well, prime factorization. So 20 is four times five or two squared times, what's the best way to go about it? Well, let's see, I don't know. First thing that comes to mind, powered by 20. So we get two powered by 40 times five powered by 20. So a number that divides this has to look like two powered by m times five powered by n. m should not exceed 40, n should not exceed 20. Uh, all right, so to be a perfect square, m and n must be actually even. So let's say m equals two times m prime, n equals two times n prime. So that would make um, m prime to be at most 20, n prime to be at most uh, 10. And they could be at least zero. So those are, you know, like the question simply is how many pairs of such n prime and n prime I could have in this range. So there are 21 options for n prime. n prime could be zero all the way to 20. So that's 21 options for n prime times. And n prime has 11 options from zero to 10. We have 11 numbers, 21 times 11, 21, 21, 231, 231 is the number of possible perfect squares that divide 20 bar, power by 20. So let's take a note of that, 231. Problem number four, find the number of integers for which this is a real number. This radical is a real number. So. Yeah, another thing about purple comic problems is that they get harder as you move forward. So, uh, what is a real number? Oh, is a real number. Oh, that shouldn't be too bad. So, real number just means that what's under the radical, we should have that to be at least uh, zero. Okay, so. Okay. Um, which this is a real number. So, well, the numerator of what's under the radical is already non-negative, so no problems there. The only thing is the denominator must be positive. So 2020 must be bigger than n squared. So how many integers, and we have to be careful, positive and negative, right? We have to look at that. So, well, let's see what's radical 2020. 2020, uh, 2000. 2020, I cannot use a calculator. I mean, on the competition you can, but let's say the rule here is that I cannot use a calculator. Uh, 2020, so I want to find the radical of 2020. We used to have an algorithm when I was like in fourth grade that actually helped us to compute radicals, but now uh, 2000, come on, we can approximate this. So 2000, if I think of 2000 as 20 times 100, the 100 is a 10, the 20 should be around four point something. So, um, hmm, what is 45 times 45? I can do these kind of multiplications. Uh, 25, 20, 25. Oh, okay. So, 45 is not good. That means 44 is, uh, will be. So, 44 all the way to zero and then negative one all the way to negative 44. So I have to just see how many numbers are in this range. Um, 44 times two, 48 plus zero, uh, 89. I'm gonna say 89. Double check uh, my math here. 
88, yeah, 89. I want to say 89 is the answer to problem four. Okay, so that's four problems. Let's now move on to problem five. Geometry, cool. The diagram below shows square ABCD, ABCD which has side length 12, 12 in each side, and has the same center <clears throat> as the square. So the small square, the big square have the same center. This is kind of tilted, all right. The side length is six. Find the area of the quadrilateral ABFE, this shaded region. I'm looking for that. I'm not told how tilted this is. Uh, okay. There is no information about that. This, that could be a good thing because now, if the positioning of this smaller square doesn't matter, then, then why can't I just think of it as being positioned in a way that the side lengths are parallel to the original? And then the question is just, what is this area? Well, that's a quarter of the difference of the areas. Well, actually, yeah, the same logic could have worked here too. I mean, I don't need that kind of thing, but I could just say here, if I connect this to this and this to this, all of these four figures have the same area. So the area of the bigger square is 144, 12 squared minus the area of the smaller square is 36. And, and that's, um, what is it, 68 uh, here and 108. 108, we divide this by four, so we get 27, 27. So problem five, the answer I wanna say is 27. Problem six, a given infinite geometric series with first term A non-zero and common ratio of two R sums to a value that is six times the sum of an infinite geometric series with first term two A and common ratio R. Then R equals M over N, where M and N are relatively prime positive integers, find M plus N. Um, yeah, that's what their way of saying, you know, this, instead of saying find R, which is not an integer, the answers are supposed to be integers. So they usually frame the question as, well, R is a rational number, write it as M over N in the simplest form, find M plus N. It's a clever way of uh, asking for an integer instead of a rational number. So a given infinite geometric series with first term A and common ratio to R. That I'm thinking means that like the next term in the geometric series would be a times two r, and the next after this would be a times two r squared, and so on. Um, uh, sums to a value. Okay, so from, I mean, yeah, this is uh, just a geometric series. We know that if the first term is r, uh, sorry, if the first term is a, and this common ratio is r, then the sum is a over one minus that common ratio. So the formula is you take the first term of the geometric series, you divide it by one minus the common ratio. This is the sum. So a over one minus two r, all right, what about it? It says, it sums to a value that is six times, well, this equals six times, the sum of an infinite geometric or first term 2a, 2a is the first term this time, and the common ratio is r, so one minus r. It's just, a, it's just a solve for r then. Um, a's cancel, cross multiply, you get one minus r equals, that's 12, 12 minus 
24R and now solve for R. So we bring 24R to this side, we get 23R. We take one to that side, we get 11. So R is 11 over 23. They are relatively prime. And so N plus N in this case would be 34. I want to say that 34 is the answer to problem six. Okay, so let's move on to problem seven. The diagram, no, the geometry problem, the diagram below shows the triangle ABC with area 64. So triangle ABC has area 64. D and E and F are the midpoints. Uh, and then point G is the intersection of these midpoint, uh, these lines FD and BE. Uh, okay, fine. Um, find the area of this quadrilateral, this shaded region. You want to find the area of that. Um, well, okay, so let's connect F to E. Uh, we know that FE is parallel to BC. Also connect E to D. We know that ED is parallel to that. We know that this up here, the triangle FAE is similar to triangle ABC. It's similar with the proportionality of one half. So AF is half, so its area would be a quarter. So the area of this would be a quarter of the 64. The total was 64. The quarter of that would be 16. So this area up here is 16. What about the area of this one, this piece? Now we're looking for this. That is, okay, so um, it's some simple fact about the fact that the area of these four pieces of this parallelogram, if you look at this par if any parallelogram you take, then you draw the diagonals, you get um, four regions. These four regions have, yeah, they have the same area because clearly these two are congruent and these two are congruent. Um, and clearly also the area of these two are the same because, the, yeah, I'm just remembering something here. Yeah, okay, so these four areas are equal. It's kind of obvious. So then if this is 16, this is also 16, just like we argued here, this thing here is 16, which means the area of this parallelogram would be 64 minus 30, 32. So 32 and a quarter of that is eight. So eight, this is eight. This is eight plus 16 is 24. 24 is the answer to that. I wonder if there was a faster way. I'm sure there is, but okay, let's just move on. Problem seven, the answer is 24. Problem eight. Camellia drove 20 miles in a city at a constant speed of 40 miles per hour. Speed, what, a constant, and sorry, and 40 miles in the country at a constant speed that was 20 miles per hour greater than her speed in the city. Her entire trip took one hour. Find the number of minutes that Camilla drove in the country rounded to the nearest minute. Uh, 20 miles in the city at a constant speed. Well, I guess we, this constant speed matters. So let's call it V. We don't know what it is, but let's denote it by the letter V. So V is the speed in the city. And we go 20 miles at that speed. So 20 miles at speed V. 40 miles in the country 
at a constant speed that was 20 miles per hour greater than, so V plus 20, the speed is V plus 20 now in the country, and we go 40 miles, 40 miles at this speed. Her entire trip took one hour. Well, we know the relationship between distance and speed and time. Um, the speed is simply distance divided by time. So time is distance divided by speed. So the time that she takes to drive 20 miles at the speed of V would be 20 divided by V. So 20 divided by V. The time that she takes to drive 40 miles at the speed of V plus 20 would be the distance 40 divided by the speed V plus 20. Together, these are supposed to be one hour. So let's set the sum of those equal to one. So 20 over V plus 40 over V plus 20 equals one. And then solve for V. Take a common denominator, V times V plus 20, and 20 times V plus 400 plus 40 times V equals 1. Cross multiply, combine like terms, we get 60 V plus 400 equals V squared plus 20 V. Bring all to one side, we get It's a quadratic equation, and to solve the quadratic, I guess, I guess can we? Um, 400 is what? Okay, quadratic equation. I guess this is nearest minute, so I, would, I don't expect integer solution here. We have to round it. So let's just use a quadratic equation. So V then, oh, by the way, that's, we have to be careful because that is asking for the number of minutes, not V. So we need to find V first. So let's find V. V equals um, 40 plus radical, uh, 40 squared, this is a quadratic formula, minus, and I didn't put the minus because that would be negative speed, which is not all. 40 squared minus M plus, in fact, um, four times 400, so that's 1600, divided by two. I can divide by two, I get 20 plus radical. And in here we have 1600 and another 1600, that's 3200 divided by four, you get 800. You take it 400 out as a 20 and then radical two. So this is the speed, 20 plus 20 radical two. Okay, if that's the speed, then the time that she drives in the country, 40 over V plus 40, if V plus 20 would be 40, divided by this speed here, 20 plus 20 radical two plus another 20, so 40. So we need to take this number and round it to the nearest minute. Okay, I don't wanna use a calculator here, so let's see if I can do it without using a calculator. So first of all, I can cancel a 20 to simplify. So I get 20 over two plus radical two. Then I will rationalize it by multiplying by two minus radical two. So the denominator becomes four minus two, two. Up there we get 40 minus 20 radical two. Divide by two, you get 20 minus 10 radical two. Nearest minute, um, 10 radical two. Well, radical two, uh, you know, is approximately 1.44, I think. 
44. 1.44. And so 10 times that would be 14.4, approximately. So 20 minus that would be 5.6. 5.6 nearest would be six minutes. Six minutes. I want to say six minutes because it mattered really that this was, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure six is the right answer here. So six. For number eight, we got six minutes. Problem nine, let A, B, and C be real numbers such that we have a system of equations. Find the product A, B, C. The product A, B, C. Well, we can solve for A, right? We can say A is ln of 125 over ln of three. Basically, if I take ln of both sides, if I take ln of three powered by a, I get ln of 125. And then this a, we can, by the log rules, we can write it in front. And then you divide by ln three. So we get this. Same thing with b. b is ln of 49 over ln of five. And c is ln of 81 over ln of seven. So let's multiply ABC. ABC is ln of, and I want to write 125 as 5 powered by 3 over ln of 3 times 49, write it as 7 powered by 2 over ln of 5. 81, write it as 3 powered by 4 over ln of 7. So the 3 here, the 2 here, 3 times 2, 6 times 4, 24, write it in front. LN5 cancels, 7 and 3, 24 is the answer to this. So 9 is 24. Okay, let's see our last problem. There is a complex number k such that the quadratic polynomial has exactly one root where i is radical negative 1. Find absolute value of k squared. OK, so com complex number is exactly one root, where i is radical negative 1. Find absolute value of k squared. All right, so um, well, in general, if I have an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, any quadratic equation and um, in a field, what happens is that now for this to have exactly one root, the discriminant must be zero. So b squared minus 4ac must equal zero. And you know, by that logic, then I will have k squared minus four times seven times 12 minus five i must equal zero. And that gives me k squared. k squared is um, 28 times 12 minus 5i. We can take a norm of both sides. So norm k squared then, was, which is the unknown here, uh, would equal the norm of this side. Well, 28 is 28. And then 12, 5, 13 is the uh, uh, famous Pythagorean triplet. So this norm of this is just 13. So 28 times 13 364. 